Hey all this is a project I did that uh, I got commissioned to do and what it is is a platform which tracks the sun so as you can see on the left side on the bottom I have a stationary platform and on top here I have a rotating platter and just a chair because the request was to put a chair on there and then it would face the chair as you can see I have a little wire going up there and that's a compass that's what I'm using to actually detect the position of the top so it doesn't matter what orientation the bottom stationary platform is in as long as the compass is calibrated which there's a procedure I'll mention uh, later the top of the platform will always be positioned to the sun the algorithm I'm using actually gives me a uh, heading a compass heading of where the sun is and that's what I'm using as a reference point on the platform as a compass heading so that's pretty much the mechanical part of it and there's the control module I have a tether running from the platform to the module and then the other cable is my USB wire. I actually don't need it right now, I just have it plugged in for the moment. As you can see it flickers every once in a while, it updates every second. Looking at the screen, trying to get it to focus. The top, uh, there you go. The top line is current date, so it's June 8th, 2013. The second line is a time, so it's 11.44 a.m. The ZON is the time zone. The algorithm that's being used uh, uses GMT time. So you have to specify local to GMT time. In my case, it's GMT minus four. And then the latitude longitude of my current location. There's more digits, they're just being cut off on the screen. The azimuth, which is the horizontal position of the sun, which currently it's 108 degrees. And you could see it go up slowly every second. And then the elevation, which is 57.3 degrees. And then the heading is the position of the platform. So currently the platform is at 115 degrees and the sun is at, at 108 degrees. There's a certain margin of error here. It especially depends if there's weight on the platform or not and the values I'm sending to the motor. So sometimes it'll overshoot a little bit, uh, but usually it's it's pretty accurate and it can be tweaked a little bit more if you want more precision and pretty much until the azimuth becomes greater than the heading the platform does nothing and when the heading is less than the azimuth then the platform will move so here let me move the platform right now and intentionally overshoot it cool. as you see right now the platform is moving until it gets to a certain uh, because it's over tolerance and then it'll rotate and there it just did a fine adjustment so if the margin of error is too great or too little it'll move the platform so if it's greater than i think 15 my i have a 15 degree margin right now so if the platform is off by one in 15 degrees it'll do a full circle back around until it becomes less so currently the heading is 112 and the sun is at 108 so there's probably a, currently a margin of error of plus minus five degrees and as you see, I have, let me try getting this in a better position. So let me turn the platform off. It has to be plugged into AC. There's a computer power supply in there, which actually provides the power for the motor. Let me try to get this in a better position. I just have a keypad for manual entry. I'm trying to get it to focus. And there you go, as you can see, if you press the star, you go into the edit menu. And the edit menu, you could edit the date all via the keypad. This doesn't have to be plugged into the computer. So let me go to edit date, the month, June, a, today is the 8th, and then the year. And you clear the entry. Or runner. So if you sometimes this keypad gets a little bit screwy when you press six, it thinks you press three, or when you press nine, it thinks you pressed six. So that's why I have a clear function in there. Uh, it only happens about five percent of the time for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure. There we go. And then when you go back, it'll be updated. Actually, I should have. I guess I should have done a different date rather than today's date. But pretty much as you saw, you could do the same thing for the others. So you could edit the time, the time zone, which is relative to uh, GMT. So when you go there. It asks you GMT plus or minus. In my case, it's minus. And if the camera will focus, you'll see that B is the minus. So you hit B and then 4. 
and then ask you for DST. DST is daylight savings time. And if it is daylight savings time, then you hit negative one. And if it's not, you just hit zero. So in this case, it is, but my location is actually GMT minus five with daylight savings. But since I hit GMT minus four, I don't have to put uh, DST in here. So that's just something to be aware of. of uh, you may have to look that up online as your current uh, time zone relation to GMT for this algorithm to work properly. So in this case, zero and then go back and it'll update all in real time so GMT minus 4 now latitude and longitude there's well actually G the time zone latitude and longitude there's two different ways to modify those one of them is by zip code and one of them is manually so let me show you that real quick so if I go to location which is D as you can see here I could uh, change it by zip code and on the S I have an SD card up here as you can see this SD card contains two things. One contains an image file, which are these little images you see here, which I made to represent these buttons. And the second thing is a giant text file, which has all the zip codes. It has latitude, longitude locations. It has time zone relative to GMT. And it has the city name. So let me show you that real quick. Search by zip code. And then it is zip code. In my case, it's 63129. It uses five number zip codes. If it's less, you could hit less. So if it's something like 0, 0, 7, 7, 7, or whatever the case might be, you hit enter. And now it's searching. It takes a second for it to do it, because it's actually searching through the entire thing. And now it just gives you a confirmation window. So it found it at latitude 38 point yada yada, longitude, the time zone, GMT minus 6. Hmm, thought it was minus 5. Either way. And the city is St. Louis, and the state is Missouri. And then you hit confirm. And now when you go back, back, it should have it, everything should be updated. I'll have to see what the deal with the GMT is. I'm not quite sure. I may not have it being saved, but either way, you could go manually in here and change it. So whenever you do set it up, you just want to make sure this information is accurate. The other thing is I have in here when you edit the location, there's a calibrate compass, cal compass on here. If you do that, it'll ask you to put the platform in four different positions. So north, east, south, and west. And that's a simple procedure. So I don't want to do it now because I don't have an actual compass to calibrate it with. You go in there, it asks you to point it north and hit enter. So you point the platform north hit enter and then point it east, position the platform east, hit enter, so on and so forth for the four coordinates, northeast, southwest, and when you confirm that, it should be calibrated to your current positioning. Now, if you're in a weird region or if you have uh, metal objects around the platform, it may throw off those readings, so the simple fix to that is just put the chair on there, that offset angle. So, what's important is the sensor, as you can see, the compass isn't attached to the platform and that's intentional. The reason that is is because when you calibrate the compass to a certain orientation with the platform and it's, if it's still off by the sun all you have to do is move the chair to where the sun is. So it's a mechanical offset if you will. So once you calibrate it if it's off just move the chair to where the sun is and then it should be calibrated and pointed always towards the sun. So that's just the control module. I wrote this all from scratch. Let me go back again. So I could have made it fancy. I could have changed the colors, but uh, this is what I came up with. And this, this box is kind of overkill. I don't want to take it apart because I have screws in there. But I have a TNC3 in there. I have the keypad. I have an LCD, SD card, and a real-time clock. So that's pretty much all that's in this box. And like I said, I have an X port on the side. I could unplug the USB. It's not required. I just... You know. There we go, and it's still not if I turn it on. <laughs> and see, it runs just fine without a computer in this tether. Now, you don't really want to hold this while you're on the platform because it might start spinning. And although that metal wire can spin, the solder one can't. It's just attached to that bottom of the platform. So, hope you like the project. See you next time.